Nobody wants to sit through a boring, old-style presentation or class. Whether in person, remotely, or hybrid, we need to change things up and make our engagement experiences exciting and fun for our audience. In fact, research into the effect of novel experiences on memory has shown evidence to indicate that by creating novelty when we present, there's a benefit to memory. In this video, I'll show you an amazing way to go from dull to dynamic, to engage your audience in a new way. The challenge with creating exciting content is that it can take time and it requires specialized skills a lot of the time. Maybe that's why we have so many presentations that are just one static screen of text followed by another static screen of text. We've all seen graphics that amaze us, but what we really want is to create those graphics. We want to amaze others. But in some cases, you need more than just basic computer skills. You have to be able to program or you need training in specific graphic design programs. And that's a little bit difficult. It can take time. But there is good news, and that's why I have this video. I was able to find a tool that's easy to use, but it creates great content around presentations, interactive images, uh, social media posts, infographics, reports, and even personal branding. And it does this all really easily without those needed specialized skills. And it gives me a lot of help along the way by having different templates and such. And best of all for me is that it works on my PC, my Mac, my iPad, everywhere because it's web-based. And that's something I really appreciate because I'm always moving from one system to another as well as collaborating with others that might have a different system as well. Having all my creations in the cloud makes them quite easy to share and to get to. And wherever I am, I can work on them. Now, what is this tool, you may ask? Don't keep us waiting, Frank. Tell us, tell us what the tool is. The tool's called Genially. And they even decided to sponsor this video so that I could show you how it works, or at least give you a nice overview. It's hard for me to choose my favorite features of Genially, but I do like the variety of things that I can do in one place. And I also appreciate that there are a lot of templates there that keep, they keep updating their templates every couple of weeks. So I'm always being inspired by new ideas and seeing samples of other work. So that's always a good thing too. So I can see what other people are doing and I can also uh, use those ideas in my own presentations. So what we do is we'll go up to the URL, which is genial.ly, so genial.ly in order to get there. You'll notice that we get our landing page. We can start now, it's free and get information, or we can drop down and get sort of a visual of what's happening here. What I can do is also log in. So I'm just going to log in using my account. And on this account, I've got, this is a clean account. So you can see that this one is, as I've, if I just signed up, you still have not created anything. If you go into creations, you can see what you've done. You can create folders here so that you can go in and keep things organized. There's even inspiration here. So you can go in and get inspiration on what other people are doing. Say I go to education, for example, I can see some of the things that are there and I can even look at ones that are reusable. So I can go in Jeopardy game is a very popular one amongst students. So we can go through and we can see all the very cool things that we can do. Now I'm going to create a brand new one. So let's go and create a new one and I get lots of different categories that I can go into. There's absolutely no time for me to go through all of these right now. They are, they're quite extensive, but you can see that I have lots of different categories around presentations and infographics, lots of things I can do. No matter which one I choose though, if I choose an interactive image to create this, it'll give me some samples here and it'll even give me a quick tutorial on how to create those interactive images. Down the side here, you'll also notice that I can expand out each of the different categories to see subcategories. So for example, infographics, horizontal, vertical infographics with examples, uh, gamification, I can do quizzes and games and escape games. I'm going to go back to interactive images and I'm going to create a brand new one here. Now, when I create a new one, you'll notice it's just as easy. I'm just working in a web interface. So this will be just as easy to work with on my iPad, my Mac, whatever computer I'm using. So what I'm going to do here is I can load images from the computer. I can go to a URL where the image is stored, grab them from my group Google Drive or grab them from Dropbox. I have a whole bunch of images in Dropbox that I've uploaded. So I'm going to go to my Dropbox and I'm going to connect my Dropbox here. Now my Dropbox is connected and I'm going to go in and I'm going to grab, let's say, an image here. There's a map. This is a great image. So I'm going to pull this image from Dropbox, choose that image, accept it. And now this is going to be the first page of my interactive content. 
You don't have to have more than one page with interactive content. It could be like a map that you just use, but I'm going to show you how to create multiple pages. Notice it's cut off the light. This is the lighthouse here of the North Coast Trail. This is where the water taxi drops you off. So this is a particular trail on the north part of Vancouver Island in Canada. Vancouver Island on the west coast in British Columbia, Canada. And I hiked this back in 2019 and it, great trail. So I'm going to choose this map here. I can modify this image and I'm just going to accept it as it is. I'm going to make sure that I got all the elements that I want on there, all the places that I want to put interactivity. So now I'm going to go and choose it. It loads up as my first page. It actually gives me a warning about my browser being out of date, so I'll have to deal with that. But here you can see it's put a couple of interactive elements on here already, and I can move them to wherever I want them to be. I'm going to add a couple more. So I'm going to add the element of zero, and I'm going to add the element of one. I'm going to add the element of two. So I've got these three elements on here. Oh, let's grab this over here. One, two, and did I get zero? Yeah. So zero over here is going to be where the water taxi dropped us off. And then this will be the first night of where we camped. And then this will be the second night of where we camped. And I could go through and I could put this all across the map. So I create a nice place where uh, students or anybody, anybody using this map can come in and click these and see some interactivity. But let's make them a little bit nicer. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that first element. And let's make them a blue. And let's make the text inside of them. So we'll grab the text inside of them. Let's make that, let's say, a yellow. So you can see it stands out a little bit more. So we can go in and we can clean up a lot of these elements, make them sort of look how we want them to look. So here we'll make the text here again. We'll make that yellow. And then we'll go ahead and we'll make the outside here. And we'll go ahead and make that maybe a lighter shade of blue. So I'm, I can modify them as I see fit and wherever I want them to be. Let's grab this first night here. Well, let's grab zero. So I'll grab the zero here and you'll notice that I can lock it. I can move it around. I'm going to go and make this interactive. So I'm going to actually link this to a page. So let's go ahead and I'll grab a URL that I want to have. So this is a URL of a company that does guiding on this North Coast Trail here. So great guys, if you ever want to go guiding there, these are the place, these are the people to see. So I'm going to open this in a new tab, or I could have it replace the same scene on the same tab. Here it makes more sense to open it in a new tab. So I'm going to go ahead and save that. And now it's going to go in and whenever somebody, when I run this, whenever somebody clicks that, they'll go to that website. I'm going to take this first night camp, same thing, go interactive. But here I actually want to go to a whole other page or maybe I want to open up a window. So I have different choices of what I can do here. Let's open up a window. So here when they click on it, it'll open up a window and I'll call this first camp. But here I'm just doing a simple one. I can add all sorts of text elements in here. So let's go ahead and I'll put in bold text here. So I put some text in here. We'll reach this camp in seven hours. And then I can put an image here to go with this camp. So I want to drop an image in here or I can click here. And if I click here, what it'll do is it'll ask me to go to my computer. So here I'm going to go into the trail here. I'm going to go into some images that I've put aside for this map. So I'll go ahead and put this image in here. So there's the image of our, our camp that we're going to go to. When I have the image in there, I can put a caption on there. I can make it medium, large, depending on the size of the window that I want to pop up. And I'll save this. So now when anybody clicks on this, that image will come up. Let's say, for example, I want to also put some guidance down here. So I could go through, choose other types of icons that I have in here. But I'm going to choose this plus icon. I'll go ahead and make that interactive as well. And in this case, I actually want to go to another page. But I don't currently have another page yet. So first I need to add that other page. To do that, I'm now going to create a new page. I have a lot of templates in here of what I can do. So there's all sorts of neat templates in here. Let's say I choose this one here. I'll add that as a second page. And then what I'll do is I'll call this something like backpacks. Once I put the information on backpacks here, now I could replace this image. What I'm going to do in my case here is I'm actually going to go through and yeah, we'll replace the image here. And now I can choose a whole bunch of places. I can use cutouts, Pixabay, Giphy's, uh, scenes that I have. So these are all tools that I can go to directly. I also have my own images, or I could have images that I put in my brand. Or once again, I can go to Dropbox. So go to Dropbox, connect into it. And now I'm going to go into some of the camp gear that I have here. And let's grab something like a backpack. So we'll find some image here where somebody has a backpack on. So I'll grab that image there. This image will now be the image that I want. I'll replace that image that was there with the backpack. 
So here I put some information on here. I oh, just made a spelling mistake. So we can say here we will be on the trail seven days. Lighter is better. I could put something like, you know, the shoes that you should wear. I could put something like walking sticks. So I can put a lot of information on here. I'll leave it as it is. But what I'll do here is I'll go back to the first page and then maybe this here, I'll grab this and I will now connect this to the second page. So this now connects to the second page. And now when anybody comes in and clicks this plus sign, they will actually go to the information about backpacks. I can do more to make this exciting. I can build up this interactivity, but you see how easy it is for me to really go in and make these changes. So I'm going to just say here that I'm all set as if I was finished. I can make it public and make it online. I can choose to make it re reusable for others. I can make it private. I haven't done a lot to build this up, but so I'm just going to make it private right now. I'm going to go all set. And now I have my item here. I can go to view it. I can also download it, but I can go here to view it. And here is my interactive map. I click on here and it's going to take me to the website that I put there. I'm going to go here and click on the image first camp. So I'm going to click on that and it's going to show me images of the first camp. I'm going to go here and click on the plus sign. It's going to go to the second page, which is going to tell me all about backpacks. I can go back to the first page and I can continue to navigate around. Now, the whole point of this is just to show you how easy it is to create a very simple interactive image, but there is so much more that we can do with the tool. As you can see, I've only just touched the surface of what Genially can do when it comes to content creation. When I use it, I feel like I'm able to concentrate more on what I want to communicate instead of just trying to learn how a tool works. And there's also a lot of community involved with Genially. So there's a big community aspect where a lot of people contribute and share ideas. With over 12 million users in 190 countries, there's a lot of other ways that you can collaborate with other people. Uh, there's probably people in your own school that are already using this tool. I was demonstrating this to some students in one of my classes and one of them said, hey, I love that product. I love Genially. I use it all the time. I use it for everything. And so we have a nice discussion and I said, oh, you know, they're actually interested in, in showing me the, having me show the product to my YouTube audience. And they said, oh, you really should. It's quite a good product. Then I started playing around with it and here we are. It really is quite good. Uh, they do have a free tier where you can get started. Um, and in some cases, that might be all you ever need. Um, personally, I did upgrade because I am working to incorporate more of those tools into my classrooms. I'm teaching more remote and hybrid classes these days, and I'm really trying to find different novel content to, to increase the engagement. And so this tool has been proven very useful for me. It also does take a lot of individual tools that I used to use before, and it kind of synthesizes them into one tool. Uh, when I say one tool, one place where I can find multiple things that I can do. It's worth taking some time to check out Genially if you're looking to engage students beyond simple slides and you know that you flip through one at a time or if you want to create content that students can interact with both in or out of class. I think that's a really important part of being an instructor having that artifacting where you 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 build something and then that's something that the student can refer to when they're doing their studying at home or off hours. Uh, maybe you want to check it out if you want to be just more engaging in any type of visual way or if you um, just want to make sure that your classroom has something that's a little more exciting than the regular way that we present. So if you want to check out Genially, I do have a referral link down below that you can use. It does let them know that you heard about them from me, but uh, most importantly, it helps you get started on your own creations. And if you're interested in more videos on Genially around collaboration, creating different types of presentations or building infographics, videos, guides, comment below. Um, and consider hitting the like button as your mouse passes towards the comment section. But let me know because this is a product that uh, is a very deep product that I think I can create quite a lot of useful content around so that we can collaborate and come up with ideas as a learning community on how to use it. I'd also be interested in hearing about any experiences you have with Genially. Um, ha have you created a cool asset? What did your audience think? Did you work on it alone? Did you work on it in a team? What other tips and tricks do you want to share with others? Comment down below and we'll, we'll start a little Genially community around this particular video or even some of the other ones that I have on the channel. Thanks for watching and thanking you for learning how to learn and teach better using technology.